But now it comes with inrunners, 2100 kV brushless inrunners inside. So it takes what is already an amazing flying twin 70 millimeter EDF jet and makes it that much better. Hobbyists, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James with another assembly video, this time on the new high performance version of the Freewing Twin 70mm ME262. Uh, the ME262 has been around for a number of years. It's gotten upgrades in the past, um, everything from a complete rescheme, that's what you see here. The original was the more grayish tone, not the greens. Um, that was a while back, and then they upgraded the Outrunners, but now it comes with inrunners. 2100k brushes in runners inside so it takes what is already an amazing flying uh twin 70 millimeter EDF jet and makes it that much better a little more efficient but the idea of this video it's been a while since we uh, uh, unboxed an ME262 for everybody so we wanted to update that build video the build is super simple and in this video we'll do a step-by-step -step assembly but first thing we're gonna do is go over the unboxing and then go over the spec so uh, I say let's show you how it comes out of the box all right guys, so you'll see the ME262 box is actually one of the bigger ones in Freewing's lineup. Not that it's so much that it's thick, but it is wide and, uh, you know, a little thin, but, um, you know, they gotta fit everything in there, those big nacelles and everything. It's all packaged beautifully. So as you pull it out, again, you can see, I'm always marveled at how uh, these aircraft are packaged. It's been a while since I opened an ME262. And again, you can see, first things coming out of the box are gonna be your two wing sections. And what I love about this, everything is basically complete on these wings. You've already got the motors installed, the nacelles are installed, the decals are already on there, the control linkages and rods are already up. Uh, pre-assembled. That's the beauty of this model. It really comes out. These two wing halves come out virtually completed. The only thing you're going to have to do is make a few wire connections um, to get it into your fuselage, but looks really good. And I love the riveting work too uh, throughout the foam on this aircraft. Uh, they added those nice raised rivets. Uh, it gives it a really cool look. And for anybody who likes to um, customize, I know I did customize an ME262 and it was fun to paint all those rivets and make them that much more detailed. But uh, coming out of the box again, you're going to get your horse horizontal stabilizers. They come out and you can see nicely done, all painted up beautifully. Your vertical stabilizer comes out next. Then you're going to get a couple baggies. Uh, the first one's going to be your plastic bits. So there's two bits that are going to help connect the main wing to the fuselage and one little plastic piece that helps secure the horizontal stabilizer to the back of the fuselage as well. Then you get your other baggie and that one's just going to have uh, one control rod mo uh, just for your elevator. Then it's going to have all your wires, a lot of Y leads come out of the bag that you're going to see. Then the next thing we pulled out was the fuselage. Again, it comes in a one piece, uh, virtually one piece fuselage. Everything is already connected in here. Your nose gear, steering servo is already there. You do have a servo installed in the fuselage for a sequenced uh, gear door, which is there. And obviously the retract itself for the nose gear is installed. But great detail on, on, this, uh, on this model. You do get nice cockpit detail, canopies already there, and again, all your decals and those rivets uh, really shine really nicely. And then the last thing out of the box, make sure you check, are these two wing spars. Uh, they're just hidden in the bottom of one of the foam compartments. Make sure you grab those. And then getting the box out of the side, here's all the parts laid out on the tables. But now, let's just go over the specifications on the ME262. All right, the wingspan on this ME262, she's 1,500 millimeters or 59 inches. And as far as length, she's 1,280 millimeters or 50.4 inches. Now the power systems have been upgraded, as I said. These are now 2952, 2100 kV brushless inrunners. And the inrunner blades, the fans on the front, are 12 bladed fans. And then for the ESCs, you get two 60 amp hobby wing ESCs with an EC5 connectors, and that powers each 70 millimeter fan. You do get eight servos throughout, some nine gram and some 17 gram, which is awesome. And as far as recommendations, you're gonna need at least a six channel receiver. Again, you're connecting your throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, landing gear, and flaps. And then the recommended battery is anywhere from a 4,000 to a 6,000 milliamp 6S LiPo. And I've always flown mine with a 5,000 pushed all the way forward. You hit that CG perfectly. So that'll do it for the specifications. Let's get started with a step-by-step -step assembly. 
So step one in the assembly is going to be securing your two wings together and making all the connections. So as you'll see on each wing piece, uh, you don't see any leads coming out. They are all tucked inside the two compartments that house the ESCs that you can see here. Uh, they have nice ventilation on the ESCs too. I like that. But what you're gonna do is just unscrew both of these covers, as you can see, and then when you pull it out, you're gonna see you got your motor connections, you've got your throttle lead, you got your flap lead, you got your aileron lead, and your landing gear lead. And there's a nice little trough buried in that you're gonna uh, obviously eventually snake all this wiring through before you put these covers back on. But first step is you wanna open up your little baggie and get all of your Y leads. So you'll see in the baggie you do get three, regular standard Y leads, just a two to one connection, and then you get one three to one connection, and that's gonna be used for your landing gear because you're gonna to need to be able to eventually connect the nose gear to this, uh, but we can do that later. So for right now, let's start making all our connections once you sort out the wires. I like to add my own tape and write either A for aileron, F for flap, T for throttle, so when I get into the fuselage, it'll be a little easier to see and uh, when I plug it into my receiver but you're gonna make the connections, one Y lead for your throttle, one Y lead for your flaps, and one Y lead for your ailerons. And then as I said, the tri lead is gonna to connect to your gear. And then you also get the connector for your EC5 connection and it has two black and two red coming off. This is how you're gonna Y in because both ESCs run off one 6S pack. So you just wanna make sure you connect the black from one ESC and the black from the other ESC to the black on the uh, adapter and then do the same thing for the red parts. And when that's all done, you should have all these connections here. Then what you wanna do is snake them through the little trough and they're gonna be down into what would be the top of the wing. Then the next step is grab your two spars. And as you see here, one is shorter than the other. The shorter spar is gonna to go towards the front of the wing with the uh, larger spar to the aft section of the wing. Get those connected on one side and then fit them together. And now again, just make sure you've, you've snaked all the wires through the trough and at this point, you can secure your ESC covers back. So I put those back on, two screws for each. And then you're gonna use these two longer plastic pieces they give you. That's what's gonna hide the wiring and also help secure your screws to the fuselage when you get to that point. I put those on, then you can flip the wing over. And again, when you're connecting these, just make sure the wires are clear uh, when you meet the two foam pieces together. Some people I know like to glue this piece together if you never think you're gonna take the wing off. I never did it, I never saw it needed it. Um, the wing is held on pretty, pretty nice and taut once you screw it all together. So now once that's done, your wings are now in their regular position. You see all the wiring coming up through the top. Now we're gonna fit the fuselage on top. So what I like to do is remove the battery hatch. Again, that's just two magnets. Take that off, that'll make it easier for you to snake in all your wiring, get it into the fuselage. And then the uh, fuselage is gonna fit right over that wing uh, perfectly. Once you do that, flip it back over. Then we're gonna use the four largest screws that you see in the baggie. They are gonna be the four screws that are gonna attach your wing to your fuselage. So once you tighten that all down, flip your aircraft back over, and here's where you're just gonna make the last connections. I do this real quick right here while I'm at this point. You're gonna connect the landing gear servo, the nose gear uh, that you see here. It is not labeled, but that is gonna go into the open remaining port on the three to one Y lead that, was, that you plugged the two main gears into. Then that entire three to one gear is gonna be plugged into the sequencer. There's two open ports on the sequencer. One is already plugged in. That is for the nose gear sequencing door. Then you plug the gear into that and then you'll see at the end of that, you have a label on it called landing gear. That's what's gonna go into the landing gear port of your receiver. So once you connect all that together, then I just leave that in the fuselage for now, put the top back on and we'll get working on the tail. So now for your tail sections, first things first, we're gonna just assemble the uh, horizontal stabilizers to the vertical stabilizer. Really easy, you can see it's, it's very hard to get this wrong. You're just gonna slide one side through one side, meet it on the other, and just make sure that the plastic portions on the control surfaces, your elevator control surfaces, that they meet because one servo drives the elevator from one side. So as long as those are connected, then they will act as one giant control surface. And then once you have those connected, you're gonna go back to your, your bag of screws and you're gonna see two short screws. 
These are the ones that are going to connect and just secure your horizontal stabilizer to your vertical stabilizer. And you can see the holes line up perfectly on the bottom. So just drive in those two screws and your tail section will be complete as its own piece. And now we're going to get that connected to the fuselage. So first things first, you'll see a little tape inside the fuselage that is holding down the elevator extension lead. So what you're going to do is obviously make that connection. Remember, mind your polarity, orange to orange. Now once that's plugged in, you can easily fit the horizontal stabilizer right into the fuselage. It's a nice flush fit. And once you see that's together, flip your aircraft over. And now you're going to see that in your screw bag, you're gonna have two different types of screws remaining. You're gonna have three shorter fat ones and two long and thin ones. The two long and thin ones are never used in this assembly, so put those to the side. That was uh, a long time ago. I guess they still come in the package, but a long time ago, you would have had to install your rudder or your elevator control linkage, but those are now pre-installed, so those are just extra screws. We just wanna grab two of these shorter fat ones and that last plastic piece from the baggie, and that's what's gonna secure your vertical stabilizer or your entire tail section to the fuselage. So flip that over, drive in those two screws, and you are done with the assembly now of the ME262. So now at this point, it's all about setting up your receiver. So I go with, I'm going with the Futaba here, and you can see I make all my connections up front. We could drop the landing gear. This is where you could check, make sure things are working. But also, the last bits in the book, they tell you to install your control rod and your rudder before you plug it in. I never like to do that with my models. I want to get the receiver installed so that I know all the servos are centered before I even bother connecting the rods to the linkages. So once it's, it's going, then I flip the aircraft over and you can see there's a little compartment underneath with one screw. You open that up, that gives you easy access to the rudder servo. So you're able to loosen that, that screw. You can slide the rod out, connect it to the rudder. I went on the outside holes. That's the way I've always flown my 262 on both the rudder and the elevator. Then I use that one control rod that comes in the baggie. That is for your elevator. Get that connected. But once you're done with that, you can see you've got a completed ME262 on the table before you. So there you have it guys, that is a, a quick assembly of the uh, Freewing ME262. For as nice and big as a twin 70 millimeter EDF she is, uh, she goes together very easily. Considering also that she is a classic now in the Freewing series, um, it's really nice. It was only nine total screws, four for the main wing, two for the horizontal stabilizers, actually, and two eight screws, if you will, two for the uh, for the horizontal stabilizer to connect or the vertical stabilizer to connect to the fuselage. So again, taking a look around her, she's got great landing gear. I always liked the 262. She's a great flyer too. She's almost beginner worthy if this is gonna be, if you're looking at your first EDF, the 262 is a very stable airframe. Um, I I've always enjoyed flying it. She can take off from grass. She could take off, uh, obviously, from pavement, no problem. But I always enjoyed it. I like the history behind the 262, just being that it was the world's first jet. So it's always uh, carried that. I like the look of it because it's a little different. To me, it's mean looking. Um, but I always, I always enjoyed it. And I love the green color scheme. I like the finish on the 262 we have. But also, very easy to change. There's a lot of cool cool liveries out there for ME262s. But now as far as this video goes, guys, we just wanted to do the unboxing, the spec, and the step-by-step -step assembly when I get chance to get out and fly, because I'm excited to fly with the inrunners. In that video, we will go over the CG, uh, recommended CG settings and where that goes. We'll go over the rates that I use um, when I fly it, and we can talk about all that stuff out at the field. So guys, I hope this helped you out. If you're considering an ME262, um, consider the free wing one. It's an awesome option. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And if we have already flown this one, then check the links in the description. You'll find links to the product there and you'll find links to the flying videos and any more videos about the high performance ME262. So guys, thanks for joining us. Like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time at Motion RC.